What's up everybody? Hi, I'm Matthew Sunshine and today is top five easy mushrooms to forage in Ohio. These are the most common mushrooms you'll find in Midwest United States of America. After watching this video, you're gonna be like, hey, I've seen that. And you're probably gonna wanna go find some uh, or harvest some. Ooh, I got it. <laughs> uh, and that's cool, that's what I want you to do. But please only take a little bit of it. Take like 10%. If there's two, maybe skip it. If there's like 10, maybe take a few. And if there's 200 still, don't go crazy, man. Just take a little bit. You see that big profile image I got? That was only a small percentage of what was available. Is that important? Is that important to know? Don't take them all? Yeah, I think it is. Keep it in. All right. Also, I have a special bonus what you can do with all five mushrooms at the end of this video. So stay tuned and let's get going. Woo! Number one, pheasant back, also known as Dryad Saddle. It got this name because nymphs that lived in oak trees would ride this like a saddle. It's pretty easy to identify. You want to look underneath, make sure there's no gills, there's pores, and then on top, look for these little brown um, specks. It looks, resembles like a pheasant, also pheasant back. Now you can cook these, but I like them dehydrated and I use them for stocks and soups. So what I like to do is I like to mix the purple with the pink to make a little, oh, look at here. Is this a conch? I think it is. Number two, artist conch. They call this artist conch because uh, people, I guess, they wanted something to draw on and then so they would go underneath this and they would say, uh, they would, look at that, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> now if you find one of these you could tap on it and it should be incredibly hard it's actually really difficult to find one that's somewhat soft uh, that's because they grow year after year after year so if you see one that could have been around for like three years and so they grow upon layers because of this you're most likely not be able to cook them in a stir fry but you can make some great decoctions with them. Number three, golden oysters. Now these can be easy to identify because you can go to a grocery store, most likely an Asian market, and buy oyster mushrooms, and then you can cook them, get familiar with the taste, what they smell like, what they look like, and then go out in nature and see if you could find them. I love how these look like a Hindu temple with uh, things building on top of each other. They're all connected, coming off of the same stem. And these things you can stir fry. They are excellent stir fry. Itchy, ni, san, shi, rishi mushroom. Rishi is number four on my list. I can tell this is rishi because of uh, the first thing is this very unique base here on the stalk. See how that's a dark uh, maroon color. It looks like it's glossy. I love how that looks and how that feels. The bottom side here uh, is usually white or a little bit of off-white. It has no gills, so it's a polypore. And on this side, this one particularly has a lot of orange. We thought this was chicken at the woods. Uh, at first from far away, but when we got closer we we knew it was Rishi uh, because of this gradient as well Sometimes this is mostly white and the, Today it's mostly orange and there's also a little guy down here Look at that baby It's 
Today was uh, also the first time we ever actually grilled them up and that tasted really good. Normally we've cut them up and dehydrated them, but at this stage, this is uh, actually pretty soft, um, but I wanna, I don't wanna touch it too much uh, because then it's gonna bruise it up. So I wanna try to be delicate as, as much as I can. We're gonna carry this little baby home and we're gonna grill up some of it and then dehydrate the rest. So this is what you're gonna do if you're gonna eat these out in nature or even at home. You want to feel where it's soft, cut out that outer edge, cut it up into little slices, and then you can stir fry it up over an open fire or your stove. <laughs> but what about the rest? Well, this is what you want to slice it up, and this is what you would dehydrate it out in nature. We hung it uh, in a net out a tree and put it around the fire for a while. Number five, chicken of the woods. This is a strong one. Ooh, look at that. Wow. Even comes with a little bug. A little buggy. All right, if you love meat or if you're looking for a meat substitute, this is your dude or your hen. It's bright orange, you could spot it from really far away. There is actually two types, there's like the fluffy type and then there's this type that's really more skinny. What you do want to look out for is there is one that looks like it that you don't want to eat and that has a bunch of uh, black spots all over it. Here, I didn't cut up with a knife but I broke it up into pieces and stir fried it. This is how you do it. All right, bonus time. Let's review. So, first one we had pheasant back or dryad salad, 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 salad all. Then we have artist conch and then golden oyster, rishi, and what was the last one? Chicken of the woods. So what I did here is I dehydrated all of these and I combined them to make a five mushroom elixir. I put these into the crock pot, put them on high for like an hour or so, let that boil up really well, and then I put it to low for a few hours, and then I simmered it overnight on warm with this nice watchdog of a cat. And look at that. The mushrooms tendered back up and it created this coffee-like look of a substance but it was uh, very mushroomy, of course, and the benefits of this is amazing. You've got to try it. No, you need to try it. It's great, it's that good. Go out and get them, now you know. Once again, if you got any value out of this video, please hit that like button. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And if you are looking for a natural approach to health and wellness that involves primal movement, self-improvement, and wild food, then hit that subscribe button. Until next time, peace, love, and sunshine.